In this video, I'm going to be taking you on a tour of rotational motion basics, just some basic introduction to terms we're going to need. I like this one. I put this one in the old Lord of the Rings. But okay, so what you're used to seeing, you're used to seeing in the linear world, you know, terms like, you know, acceleration, uh, you know, forces, impulse, momentum, these kind of terms. And we've got rotational equivalents for each. So I think first, before we do anything else, uh, it's important to just discuss what those different values are. Because if in your head, you're already used to this left column of linear, so sort of the linear world, then on the right column, I want you to really try to learn what each of these variables means. Because if you can, then this topic actually becomes quite easy because it's just a matter of, oh, that's this thing. Oh, that's just this thing and so on. So this is going to be reasonable as long as you understand what each of these things are. So let me go through them. First of all, S is displacement. Uh, that's in the linear world. We're going to use a rotational version. We're going to say delta theta. So it's going to be a change in angle. This is usually measured in radians. We'll go over those details more in other videos. Right now, I just want to introduce the players, just the terms. So U, which is the initial speed, well, we're going to call that omega i, which is going to be the initial angular velocity. And where V was the final speed or final velocity, this is going to be omega f, the final angular velocity. Where A was an acceleration, this time we're going to use alpha for the angular acceleration. T, luckily, is just a time. That just stays the same. That's good. Um, all right, what about M, mass? There's a kind of rotational equivalent to mass. It's not exactly, but it's called I. It's the moment of inertia. And again, I'm going to have other videos that walk you through all this, so don't worry. F, it's kind of torque, but I'm going to say kind of. Okay, that's because it's not exactly, but it's close. I think this is a okay way to think about it. P, momentum, we've got angular momentum. We're going to use L for that. And where J, the impulse, was equal to the change in momentum, then we also have a change in angular momentum, delta L. So these are the main terms we need to be coming to terms with. Haha. <laughs> so let's actually go ahead and uh, do just one little example here. So not example, but... Um, a diagram at least. So if you have an object that's rotating, so let's say it's rotating about in a circle. So let's just say this here could be my angle like this. It goes from here to here, let's just say. We're gonna call this a here theta. And this thing here, let's assume it's you know going that way, for example. So it's rotating that way. Well, we have terms. One is called angular velocity. We're gonna use omega for that. Now, we've got theta. We're going to do that in radians, okay? So that's just going to be, you know, uh, what your angle is. This is going to be measured in radians, your angle here. So this must be, angular velocity must be in radians per second, because it's a speed. It's like how many radians are you changing every second? So it's going to be measured in radians per second. So I'm going to write times second to the minus one. And then we have something else called angular acceleration. We're going to use that alpha like this right here, and that's going to be equal to, and the reason why we're going to use this right here, um, this is actually going to come from an important uh, equation here in a second, but angular acceleration is going to be measured in radians per second squared. That's what an acceleration is. Now, do you remember the equation uh, for linear? Okay, it was acceleration equals a change in velocity over a change in time. I'll just say remember this because we have a version of this for acceleration. So we're going to have this version right here, which I'm going to write, which is going to be, uh, well, alpha is just going to be a change in angular velocity over a change in time. Well, that means it's just going to be the, let's say, the final angular velocity minus, whoops, I shouldn't say delta there. There, I should just say final angular velocity minus the initial angular velocity, all that over a change in time. So each of these, I think, are important enough to understand just the terms. We're going to be going over all these in much bigger detail in other videos. I just wanted to introduce these terms, okay? So these are here, these three main ideas. And again, the key thing to put into your head or the thing you're going to need is going to be this piece right here. Okay, so this is what we've just done. We've looked at these rotational equivalents. If you can put these into your head already, that'll be great because then the rest of rotational motion is going to be a lot, a lot simpler. It's just a matter of transposing. Oh, this equals that. Oh, then that's simple enough. 